Uh, obviously, uh, heading into the Citrus Bowl, we're really excited uh, for the opportunity that we have to play uh, University of Alabama. Uh, we understand the, the challenge that we have in front of us, and our, our guys have had a great week of preparation and uh, preparing for this opportunity. Right. Same thing. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We'll start over on the right. A couple of few rows back. Josh, do you, do you sense this Alabama defense is vulnerable? Uh, you know, this defense is um, very talented. You know, uh, Coach Saban and, and Coach Golden have done a really good job putting together this defense, facing some of the challenges uh, that they've had this year as far as injuries. Uh, but they played pretty good, you know, throughout the year. You know, you look at them, one of the things that stands out is, uh, you know, they're second in the country in turnover margin. Um, so, obviously, creating uh, turnovers, but also offensively for them, doing a really good job of maintaining the football. So, uh, they present a number of different challenges um, that we've been preparing for, and, and we're looking forward to the battle. A couple rows up, still on the right. Yeah, Josh, what has this year been like for you? I mean, just, you know, going from Alabama to, to Michigan, you know, being a first-time offensive coordinator, can you just describe what the year has been like? Uh, this year has been awesome. You know, I get a chance to work with, uh, you know, some fabulous young men, too, that are here today to represent us. And, uh, uh, you know, the support that I've gotten from our players, the support I've gotten from our coaches, um, it's been amazing. You know, so uh, it's really living out my dream. I'm honored to be here at the University of Michigan to be able to lead these young men and uh, continue moving the needle forward as we continue moving on. Three rows back, staying on the right. Perche, you played at Alabama one time. What, what do you remember about that that experience? Uh, it didn't exactly go my way. Um, I just remember going going in and playing in that game as a freshman. Uh, as a completely different player back then, and um, I was just happy to get the experience. A couple rows up, staying on the right. Josh, what do you think down the stretch of this regular season clicked for this offense? Uh, you know, when you look at the first six games, um, you know, there's a lot of positives. There's some negatives in there. But when you look at the first six games, there was uh, 13 turnovers, uh, I want to say to believe. And so, um, you know, that wouldn't put you in the top of the country at any category from that standpoint. And then you look at, you know, our last six, I want to say uh, we were in the top five or ten uh, in the country as far as in, in turnovers at that standpoint. Not that you're ranking at that point, but we only uh, had three turnovers from the last six games on. And so, uh, when you're extending drives, you're not turning the football over. You're able to put points on the board and continue those drives. And so, uh, you know, and I think it's a credit to our players. You know, um, they continue to put their head down, focus on the fundamentals, techniques, and details. And, um, you know, they did an unbelievable job. You know, it, it ultimately it comes down to, you know, our guys. And you look at some of the big wins that we've had, and, and it's a tribute to those guys. They took those games over and, and really took ownership of it. Over on the left, three rows back. Alex Mike. Uh, Josh, how much has your familiarity with the Alabama offense and uh, helped your defense? This, how much have you been kind of poking your head into that room a little bit and giving them some insight? Yeah, I think uh, you know, I think it always helps. Obviously, going against us, but you know, they're different. We're different. You know, uh, obviously, there's a lot of similarities in what we do offensively. I think, uh, uh, you know, I think they've done a really good job adapting and adjusting the offense um, from previously being there, um, and you know. Um, they've got good players. They've got good coaches. Steve, Car Steve Sarkeesian has done a really good job for them offensively. And so um, Coach Brown does an amazing job, you know, in battling us. And, and that's one thing that's led us to get better is going against our defense each and every day. You know, I think that's one of the things that really attributes to our success is we go against one of the best defenses in the country. Um, you know, and so Coach Brown's done a phenomenal job with our defensive unit, um, preparing them, but also preparing us for the challenges that we'll face. Staying on the left against the wall. Uh, AP Stedham, WHEP, AM and FM, Foley, Alabama. This is for Ben and Shea. Ben, who's the best defensive lineman from a rush standpoint? And then, Shea, what's different about Alabama's pressure? Um, I wouldn't put a name on that. I mean, they've got an outstanding defensive front. Um, you know, it's going to be one of the best that we've seen all year. Um, you know, thankfully, just the way that the Big Ten worked out, you know, we had some outstanding defensive ends, interior D linemen all year to um, help us get ready for this game. Um, you know we've had uh, we've had our fair share of battles with with different teams we played throughout uh, throughout the season. So um, we're really looking forward to the challenge uh, the Alabama defensive front brings. Um, I think we match up really well, and uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good battle. Over on the right, Shay, you said uh, you're a different player than you were the first time you played Alabama. Four coordinators later, how has your game evolved? And, and Josh, if you could speak to to how Shay's evolved this season. 
Uh, yeah, completely different. Um, uh, I was watching film um, in my freshman and sophomore year. And it's just, it's, and it's completely different. And, um, I'll go to battle with this guy any day of the week. This is uh, Sugar Shea Patterson right here. And uh, just to see, um, uh, you know, really to see uh, his confidence, you know, throughout the year continue to continue to, 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 to rise each and every week, his preparation, um, his performance. Um, uh, you know, obviously, statistically, he did some pretty amazing things throughout the year as far as number of 300-yard uh, passing games. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think there was some adversity that we faced offensively. And I think Shea is one of the leaders and Ben is one of the leaders that really took ownership of it. And no one put their head down. Um, they continued to fight and continue to push through. And that's a testament to their character. You know, there was, there was a point in the year when a lot of people were saying give up and quit and, hey, this isn't working, this isn't this. But none of our kids believed that uh, because they truly knew who we were. They knew who we were in practice, who we were in games. Um, and it was a testament to their character to fight through everything. So uh, I couldn't be more um, proud of Shea and, and, and Ben, both of these guys. Um, but specifically when you say of Shea, just um, this guy's a player, man. He's, he's, you know, he's been playing at an extreme high level for us, and he's been the leader of our offense, leader of our team. Um, and like I said, I'll go to battle with him any day out of the week versus any team in the country. Moving a little bit further in on that same row. James Ogletree, the Crimson White. Josh, what have you learned in your first year as a play caller, whether that's X's and O's or communication and getting through to your guys? Um, you know, I would say, uh, you know, when you first take over a job, um, you know, the only thing that ever comes to mind is all the positive things. You know, you, you obviously think about, you know, okay, uh, um, you know, all the things positive, all the scoring, the touchdowns, and um, you never really uh, set the standard as far as uh, thinking about the negative things as far as the adversity you may face. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can laugh about it now. You know, our first play of the season ended with a fumble. So, uh, you know, when you're sitting there on your first play call, the first thing that happens, the next thing you know, the ball's on the ground. Uh, you know, you got to learn how to deal with adversity. And so I think that was, that was the unique thing. But I think really the thing that, um, that really inspired me and inspired our offense is I knew that I could look in the eyes of our young men each and every week, and they never lost faith. They never lost confidence. Uh, and when your players play for you and they play for each other, good things ultimately end up happening. And, and um, that's my trust in them, my belief in them. But most importantly, I think their trust in their coaches, their trust in, uh, uh, in their teammates, their trust in Coach Harbaugh. Um, we've got a great culture uh, within, our, within our team, within our offense. And um, we're really proud of everything that we've accomplished. We're proud of each other, but we're not done. We've got a great opportunity ahead of us to, to, to really end the season the way we want to. Back. Left, Joseph Salvador, Florida Citrus Sports. Shay, what was the turning point here for you this season where the offense started to click for you and the team? Um, I mean, starting point, I mean, anytime, you know, new offense and, you know, Coach Gaddis had to come in and, you know, adjust to new players and, you know, we had to learn new schemes and, um, you know, there's some going to be some growing pains and but I know in the end, um, no, right now, it's going really well. We're going to go uh, over on the right, three rows. Uh, Tony Sukalis, BamaInsider.com. Uh, Coach, you, you worked with Devontae Smith last year. He had somewhat of a breakout year this year. Is that something you saw coming uh, from him? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, you know Devontae Smith's a great player. He's a great young man. He's a student of the game. Um, constantly, we spend time in the office and – I told people after the season uh, last year, had he not got hurt and faced some of the injuries that he faced towards the end of the year, um, that a lot of people would have been talk to, talking about him uh, as much as some of the other guys in the room. That's a very talented room of receivers. Um, you know, they're great young men. Um, and, uh, you know, just a lot of credit to those guys. I got so much respect for those guys. You know, Devontae, Jerry, um, Henry, and, and – um, uh, and, um, and um, oh, I lay about got late Jalen Waddle. Sorry, I'm just kind of forgetting the names real quick, thinking of my own guys. But, uh, you know, they're all talented, um, very talented young men, but even better people. And so, um, I think it's a testament to them and their character and obviously their development. Uh, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, I think they've, they've, they've really kind of established themselves and, um, uh, just got a tremendous amount of respect for those guys. Yeah, far right, second row. Josh, what's the uh, greatest um, thing that you learned being an offensive coordinator versus a position coach? Uh, is there something 
when you take that next step that you really kind of start to understand even more so regarding the offense? I'll tell you the thing, uh, the thing that you really learn the most is, you know, every play call, every play lives with you past that play. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> as a position coach, you can kind of go to bed at night um, and wake up the next morning after a game ready to move on as a coordinator. You don't sleep at night, you know, whether it's good or bad, you're always going back through processing um, every game, every call, um, and, and trying to evaluate how you can, you know, put your kids in a better position, how you can put your team in a better position. So, um, you know, that's a little bit from my mindset. I'm, I'm just, you know, it kind of drives me crazy from that standpoint, in a good way, uh, not in a negative way, but uh, just the brain just never stops thinking, you know, how you can help these young men and help put them in position to be successful. Just time for a couple more, same row on the right. Josh, with early signees like, uh, or Ryan Duke on live, uh, with early signees like Blake Corum in a few practices in with you guys last week, how beneficial is that for them and what was your impressions of, impressions of him during, during those practices? Yeah, I think it was very beneficial from a team chemistry standpoint, just mixing those guys in, you know, kind of uh, getting them around some of their teammates and, and really kind of showing those guys how we practice uh, and the culture that we have in practice. Um, there wasn't a ton of work that they could do, obviously, as we were focused on our opponent coming up uh, and moving along in our game preparations. But uh, very, very pleased. Um, you know, offensively, um, uh, we had uh, Zach Zenner and uh, then we had uh, Blake Corum uh, there early. And really pleased with both of those young men and, and, and what they displayed. Um, Blake's got a unique ability uh, with uh, be explosive with the ball in his hands. And uh, we're excited about him. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to welcome those guys back in January and they're going to have to really get back to work. It's going to be a, it's going to be a different, it's going to be a different set and it's going to be a different team. It's going to be new opportunities and new challenges. And so we look forward to welcoming those guys on, on campus. Uh, but first and foremost, we gotta, we gotta take care of the job that we've got at hand with this game. Final question, right center, Michael. For everyone up there, I know Nico Collins is a Birmingham guy. Has he talked, has he talked at all about this game meaning anything more to him just being from Alabama? Uh, you don't need to talk about motivation for this game. I think all of our guys are excited, um, you know, any game. Um, this is the most important game for us because it's our last game. It's our last game as, as a team uh, for this 2019 year. Um, this is our last game for our seniors, uh, these young men that sit up, up here, that we want to make sure that we lead these guys out the right way. And, and so, obviously, um, there's going to be a chip on some guys' shoulders. You know, Nico, obviously, as well, you know, being from – uh, being from Birmingham and obviously his familiarity with the program. Um, but Nico stayed, you know, he stayed steady in his preparation. Um, you know, we haven't, uh, you know, the thing we don't want to do is make it different than any other approach that we've had all year long. Um, and so, you know, we got to stay within the framework of how we prepare each and every game and each and every week uh, and continue to focus on the things we need to focus on and make sure that, you know, we're as prepared as we can be uh, for when we take the field. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you, Coach.